Hello guys, welcome to Ofarts Garage here in Greenville, South Carolina, technically Powdersville. We build cars four or five a year. We're here to see my station wagon, the grocery getter. So here we have a 57 Chevy 210. There's a peak. More later. is a 1957 210, even though it looks like a Bel Air, and it's not a Nomad. We built it over a period of uh, three to five years. It's still a work in progress. It's a driver, LT4 stroker motor, uh, 57 wagon, and it's all Corvette underneath. Well, actually, my son is the one that created it. He has the 78 Trans Am, and he's a gearhead. When he was three years old, he met Roger Penske and Rick Mears out in Palm Springs. He fell in love with the Grand Sport Corvette, which if you look at the paint job on this, it's uh, mirrored after Penske's 003 Grand Sport Corvette, except it's a station wagon. He actually designed the car when he was six years old. We built the car over a period of uh, three years, used a couple local guys, we used Bucket Stitch to do the interior. Uh, Dwayne and his buddies did a fantastic job. We've got a one-piece fiberglass headliner, We've got Recaro seats in the front, Malibu seats in the back, buckets, and my best thing is the 66 Corvette dashboard uh, that required major surgery. We had to build a new tail shaft uh, for the transmission to run the Corvette analog speedometer. We had to run, obviously, the computer LT4 engine out of one side. Bruce Willis did an interview for Playboy magazine and I was lucky enough to meet him. Uh, we do a lot of work in nuclear power plants and all kinds of generation, but we met him. He owns a town down in southern New Jersey and we were in there one night having a hamburger and a beer and he came in and we started talking to him. And he used to own a 1966 Corvette and if you Google Bruce Willis and Playboy magazine you'll see he did an interview uh, and he said the 66 Corvette dash was the epitome of beautiful. You'll see it's got a big tack, a big speedometer, and the gauges on the side. He thought it was balanced perfectly, and I totally agree with Mr. Willis. The dash is my favorite because I, 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 welded, I welded that in myself. The engine's kind of was probably the biggest nightmare of the car. When we got the motor, we took it apart. Everything was great, but these are computerized engines, and we've cranked it up. We literally cried to death because it was running so rich. And it turns out um, it had a, a standard computer in it, and it wasn't working with the 4060. We took it up to more performance in Charlotte, and the camshaft that's in this thing is not very unusual. So it took us two or three tries to get the engine to run right, and we finally found a computer guy in, um, out in Ohio that reflashed the computer for me. And the engine's a beast. It's got a 400 crank in it. Uh, it's putting out close to 500 at the flywheel. Most of you guys out there on video land will realize that you run an automatic transmission to parasitic losses through it. So we're probably putting maybe 430, 440, because the 4L60E, we've had it rebuilt once. Uh, my son decided to race it out in Reno. And let's say there was not much left of the transmission. He's smiling back there behind the cameras. So we have like fender washers is what the guy at the transmission shop said our clutches look like for a second and third gear. So I limped the car into the tranny shop on fourth gear. Uh, so we rebuilt the tranny. Uh, they did a fantastic job. We've got more clutches. Uh, we went with carbon fiber clutches in it. And when you hear the car run, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Car runs really well. Uh, it's built for a driver. Um, we used uh, Greenville Tech Kids to weld in brand new NOS, stands for new old stock floor pans, out of a 57 210 wagon we bought up at Charlotte, the auto fair. Car's got ZR1 wheels, Corvette wheels on it. The uh, side mirrors are off our C5 Corvette, which we, have, we own a couple C5s. And being in the Corvette Museum, I decided I wanted the C5 mirrors on the side of it, give it a unique look. And little did I know, I had to buy two computers uh, to get the mirrors to work. So. The side mirrors not only are there, but I had to buy the insert, which you'll see in a minute, uh, to run the power windows. Uh, and it's got two computers, one in each door, to run the mirrors and the power windows. And that only took two or three cases of beer and two buddies to, to wire. 
We had the car in hot August nights for about five years, and we had a house. We love Carmel by the sea. We had a house down there, so we drove it down there. And there's a, a plaque in the front you'll see at Carmel by the sea. So we drove the car down from Reno uh, to Carmel, and uh, it set off a lot of car alarms because the exhaust, when you hear it run, it's uh, relatively loud. But not, you know, by South Carolina standards, it's perfect redneck. By California standards, it's probably uh, too loud. But it's uh, pretty much straight through, two and a half inch pipes uh, with shorty headers from Sanderson out of San Francisco, custom made cast headers because uh, there's 57 pretty narrow uh, inside the engine bay. So we had to do some adap adaption for uh, the headers. So we're close to a really East Coast car mecca, or they call this Detroit South. And we went over to Knoxville, we go over there every year and we bought a total Corvette and it was hit in the back. So we bought the entire front clip, the LT4 engine, the transmission, the wiring harness, etc. And then we bought another one for this outfit out of Florida called Hoppies. We bought a big uh, rear end out of a Corvette. So the, cor the whole drivetrain in that station wagon is a Corvette, which is hard to believe. It's a 95 Corvette. But Fat Man Fabrications up out of Charlotte. Brent did the fabrication for us, and I designed clips, so basically the whole front end of the Corvette bolts right in the front, and the back has got two licks, and the whole rear end bolts right up. And we had to create a ladder bar underneath the car. I don't know if we'll be able to get a shot of that. But there's a ladder bar that connects the transmission to the rear end to stiffen it like the stock Corvette, uh, except this is probably four feet longer than the stock Corvette. We bought this car in Northern Greenville County. It's an original South Carolina car, and it has bullet holes in the back glass, and all my buddies said I had to get new glass. So what we did is we had the PPG guys come and just put their uh, special solution in there to seal up the bullet holes, but I've got three bullet holes still in the rear quarter glass. Uh, the windshield is brand new, <laughs> and so is the side glass on the doors, but the rest of it's the original glass. Uh, the gas tank is uh, from a guy in El Paso, it does tank sink, and it's a 27 gallon uh, stainless steel tank with a Corvette in tank fuel. It's got bigger injectors. Uh, when you hear the thing run, you'll see why. I like it because it's unique. It's, uh, it was one of the first station wagons. My son and I are into station wagons. When we built this car, the only people that liked it were the Mexican kids who I love lowriders. And that's one of the next cars I want to build is a lowrider. This car now is coming to vogue. I mean, everybody is now doing station wagons, whether Malibus, full-size Chevys, uh, Shamus, the Buicks, etc. We just love driving the car. It gets a lot of looks. Uh, we've taken it to a lot of car shows in the area. And most of my friends have, uh, you know, Camaros, Corvettes, etc. But this thing hauls them, hauls the mail. Plus, we can take the coolers and everything in the back of it, since it is a, a usable station wagon. I wanted to flare the fenders on it. If you look at it, it's kind of cut straight. All my buddies told me I couldn't do that. So what I did, uh, and I'll be able to get a shot of it, but I mini tubbed it internally. So when you look at the ZR1 wheels off of that, they're really, really wide. They're 17 inch, 315, 35s in the back. Uh, my son will tell you they're a bear to take off. Um, but they're, the whole back of it, Dwayne and Bucket Stitch did an absolutely phenomenal job. They're leather lined on the mini tubs. So the whole interior in this car, I think, is a work of art. They did a fantastic job. Make sure you leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, and click the bell so you'll know next time we post a video. The car is a 1990 <laughs> Nissan Silvia. It has a SR20 DET. It's an engine specific to um, the cars over in Japan. Uh, the one in the US had a different, different engine. The body style you can get in the US is a Nissan 240SX.